Unbound Theatre presents The Chronicles of Professor Cronomier, The Tudor Assassin. Written by Dario Knight and performed by Erica Sanderson. Chapter 15 The Play The banquet in the Great Hall was nearing its end. Astrid trudged through the raucous mass of nobility, guffawing and quaffing at each of the long tables, and refilled their glasses from a silver decanter. Occasionally the more red-faced lords would bark some lewd comment at her, but she didn't hear them. She scanned the room continually for any sign of the wraith. There were all manner of misshapen and undesirable men in the room, but none she would assume masked a demon from another world. Hours had passed since the professor had left for the riverbank. Hours of searching with no sign of the wraith, or the one person whom Astrid had faith could stop it. Behind the stage, the actors were beginning to panic. There was still no sign of Robert. Under Will's instruction, they had readied themselves for the performance, dressing themselves in a splendid array of costumes. In one corner of the room, Thomas was seated before Mary, the wardrobe mistress, who was applying a heavy layer of makeup to the boy's face, finishing with a set of red lips. What can we do, Will? He called across the room. Stop shifting about or I'll have to start again, Mary chided. Will, he's still missing. He will come back. Have faith, young Thomas, Will calmly replied, dabbing a wisp of red powder to his cheeks. She'll hang us. Hang the lot of us, Charles murmured from his corner of the room. <laughs> She'll need a bloody big scaffold for you, Mary smirked. The door of the room burst open, and Robert stepped across the threshold. Robert! Thomas beamed and made to stand, only for Mary to swat him across the back of the head. I warned you! She dabbed the last of the powder on him. Now, get your frock on! Where were you? the boy asked as Mary began helping him into a huge ornate dress. I went for a walk, Robert grunted, still in the doorway. All through the rehearsal? Where did you walk to? Portsmouth, barked Charles. Robert advanced on him with a dark determination that made him shrink back. Will intervened. We're glad to have your company, Robert. Now quickly, into costume. Have you got the hump, Mary? Hump? Robert frowned. For your back, offered Thomas. Robert looked from him to Will, then flexed his shoulders. His back arched, and a hump swelled behind his shoulder, forcing him to stoop. The other actors backed away in horror, save Will who looked on astonished. The curtain leading to the stage was pulled back, and one of the stewards of the house leaned in. She's on her way. To the stage. The troop quickly followed orders to get away from their colleague, Charles leading the way, and Thomas hesitantly following on behind. Will remained with Robert, perturbed but not wanting to betray his suspicions. Will, Robert said in a low voice. Is all well with you, Robert? You appear... changed. Before Robert could answer, Thomas dashed back in. I forgot me wig! He grabbed an elaborate hairpiece from one of the tables and dashed back for the stage. Come on, Will! Will turned to Robert. Put on your costume. I'll see to matters out there. Astrid filled another glass, emptying her decanter, then scanned the room for the umpteenth time. Two trumpets sounded a blasting herald, and the room fell silent. Those seated at the tables rose to their feet and turned to the raised table at the top of the room. The main doors opened and guards marched into the room. The Queen of England followed them. Astrid was alarmed at the sight of the monarch. She had seen all manner of likenesses, but never the genuine article. She was not a tall woman, and was no doubt extremely slender beneath her voluminous royal gown. She wore a high, stiff collar, and so many jewels Astrid wondered how she kept her head from drooping. Her skin was caked in thick white makeup, her eyebrows and lips painted on its surface. She wore a wig of vibrant red hair beneath her crown. Elizabeth would have struck Astrid as being a most fragile painted woman, were it not for her eyes. They beamed, sharp and determined, inspecting the entire hall as she took her place at the table. Nodding to the assembled crowd, she sat down, and her subjects followed. A silence which seemed to last an hour followed. Proceed! 
she commanded in a small but powerful voice. The crowd of heads turned to the stage. Astrid had not noticed the actors enter the room and smiled as she saw Will and his colleagues in their finery. The playwright stepped forward. Your Royal Majesty, we offer for your consideration a play of my own composition. We shall see it at once, Master Shakespeare. Her voice was firm but not lacking in warmth. Will bowed. Of course, we present the tragedy of King Richard III. A great murmur rippled across the long tables. Richard's downfall had paved the way for Elizabeth's family to reign. His inevitable demise at the end of the play was not likely to be mourned. The actors bowed and retreated back behind the stage as Astrid scanned each of their faces and moved to the side of the room. A small collection of musicians played a fanfare to begin the story, and then Robert, in a long black wig and clasping onto a crutch, shuffled onto the stage to boos and hisses from the audience. Astrid could not contain her gasp as she recognised the stretched skin and misshapen form of the wraith's new host. She wanted to turn and scream at the crowds to run, to warn the Queen that her life was in danger. But what would follow? The creature was about to attack, and the one person Astrid trusted to stop it had gone. She had promised to return, and she had lied. Tears rose in Astrid's eyes as the wraith began to speak. Now! is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York. Astrid listened, frozen to the spot, as the wraith recited Will's lines in a rasping staccato. The words were enough to seize her bones in an icy grasp, but as the speech continued, the wraith looked about the room and fixed her with a stare. Still, it spoke. I, that am curtailed of this fair proportion, cheated of feature by dissembling nature, deformed, unfinished, sent before my time into this breathing world. Astrid held the creature's gaze until it finally moved away and addressed another group of spectators. As soon as it did, she reached forward and grabbed a knife from the table beside her. She held it away from view, but gripped it tightly in fear. She closed her eyes and tried to steady her breathing. I am determined to prove a villain and hate the idle pleasure of these days. Plots I have laid, inductions dangerous. In and out, in and out, in and out. She was ready. Dive thoughts down to my soul. Here Clarence comes. Astrid opened her eyes in time to see Will walk out onto the stage, flanked by two other actors dressed as guards. The wraith smiled. Brother, good day. Dropping the crutch, the wraith straightened up and grabbed Will by the throat. The actors looked around in alarm, but the audience simply continued watching, absent-mindedly eating scraps from the feast. Robert, Will gasped. What mean you by this? The wraith merely snarled and threw him down from the stage, crashing to the floor between the tables. Were it not for Will's next cry, the crowd might have assumed the stunt to be part of the action. Your Majesty, flee! This man's a spy! Elizabeth rose immediately, but the guards either side of her drew their swords and pointed them at her throat. Astrid recognised them now, the guards who had let her and the professor through the gates. Their eyes had the same misty stare that the thugs who'd accompanied Fryzer had been afflicted with. They were the wraith's servants. Astrid leapt onto a table. Run, you fools! Get out of here! The crowd hesitated, some slowly rising from their seats. The rest of the actors had appeared at the back of the stage, having heard the commotion. Run! she screamed. A stampede flowed out of the hall, echoing frantic yells and cries for help. The actors fled back behind the stage, and soon only the wraith, Will, Astrid, the Queen and the guards remained. Will made to crawl away from the stage, but the wraith leapt down like a wild animal and pulled him to his feet. Elizabeth looked on defiantly. I have outlasted many threats to my life, Sirrah. By whose orders do you act? No orders. Alone, agent? Foolish. Not alone. 
My brothers will follow when I have ripped this world apart for them to feast upon. Astrid! Where is the professor? Will gasped, the wraith holding his throat tightly in its grasp. I, 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 I don't know, Astrid stammered. Oh, that one's easy, a familiar voice rang from the stage. She is behind you. Professor! Professor Chronomier stood centre stage, holding the hourglass mechanism from her ship. A tangle of wires wrapped around her arms and linked to a series of glass bottles and flasks hung from her coat. Behind her stood Thomas, still in his dress and makeup, but with his own wavy blonde hair released from the confines of his wig. He held a wooden box in his arms, which was connected to the professor's device by another jumble of wires. On top of the box was a lever. What on earth? Astrid began. Salvaged from the machine that brought me here. Good evening, your majesty. And to you, my subject, Elizabeth replied coolly. Am I to assume you mean to rid me of this schema? I'll give it a go, certainly. Your meddling is misguided, snarled the wraith. Time is already changed. I failed once, and I thank you for it. Truly, I do. Our failures inspire us. I have seen the darkness you mean to spread, and I will stake my life on preventing it. Empty words. Do you think? Then allow my actions to speak more loudly to you. Thomas, now. Thomas threw the lever on the box he was carrying. A metallic hum swelled to fill the air. Sparks flew out of the box and zapped along the wires around the professor. The fluid in the glass bottle bubbled and frothed. What is this trickery? The wraith growled above the mounting noise, pulling Will close to him. Astrid! The professor called over the noise. On it, prof! Astrid cried and leapt at the wraith, sinking her knife deep into its arm. It screeched knocked Astrid off her feet and let go of Will, who fell then made to crawl away. With a sickening tear, the skin of Robert's arm shredded and the wraith's clawed arm swung at Will, but he was ready for it. He pulled Marlowe's dagger from his belt and swiped at the creature, catching its talons so that it shrieked again and recoiled. Get clear! the professor shouted as she set the hourglass spinning into motion. Static energy snapped and sparked all over the frame. A shockwave blasted the room, knocking over ornaments and extinguishing every candle. The bolts of energy fizzed and crackled, filling the hall with bursts of icy blue light. The wraith will come for you, Professor! The creature screamed above the noise. You and the little lost child! I'll be waiting, the Professor replied, and then thrust the hourglass out at arm's length. An eruption of electricity ripped from the glass, thundered across the chamber and hit the wraith in the chest. Robert's skin burst into pieces, and the skeletal creature within disappeared in an explosion of silvery light, sending everyone tumbling to the floor. The Chronicles of Professor Chronomio, an Unbound Theatre production. The Tudor Assassin was written by Dario Knight. It was performed by Erica Sanderson, with music by Kevin MacLeod. <laughs>